Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lecture, we are going to be taking a look at enolate chemistry, which I realize is something I haven't brought up on the channel yet. So enolates are compounds that are formed through the use of bases with carbonyl compounds, and they're usually a precursor to different condensations or types of reactions that most students will learn at the very end of organic chemistry. So we are going to take a deep dive into enolates in this lecture series, and we will do formation of enolates and discuss what they are in this lecture right now. So thank you for joining me today as we get ready to discuss enolates. For any information that you might need, including information for our website, check the description box and we've got everything linked there. So enolate chemistry, what are enolates? Well, enolates are derived from the word enol, and enol is referring to an alkene or a double bond, that's where the ene portion comes from, and all being an alcohol. So an enolate is really going to be an enol that has gone into its uh, ionic form, essentially, right? So if I have, let's say, uh, well, we'll use a ketone. So let's just use something like acetone, right? I could use acetone. And if I expose this acetone to highly acidic conditions, I could change this into this, right? And we could talk about different forms that we would have here, where you could also look at the formation of something similar to this, right? Where you could have alcohol, and then you could also have double bond, right? CH2, like this. So this right here would be an enol. Okay, and an enolate would simply be if this hydrogen were to be removed. And so that would give you the enolate version where there would be a negative charge on that oxygen right there. So mechanistically, you can show this in a couple of different ways. But the way that I usually like to show it if I'm giving an example uh, to my class is I'll give something like I just had above, a ketone. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to explicitly draw out the CH3 group over here. These hydrogens are going to be mildly acidic. So they're nowhere close to as acidic as something like uh, certainly HCl or H2SO4. But even things like water and methanol that are amphoteric are still slightly more acidic than these. Okay, so you need a relatively strong base, but you can get them to work. They're kind of just slightly above uh, the pKa of water and methanol. So acetone um, and a lot of other similar ketones, you're looking at somewhere a pKa of around 19 to 20 as far as their acidity is concerned. Okay, somewhere in that range, that's what their pKa would be approximately. And if you use usually sodium hydroxide, uh, you will see a base later on in this lecture series called LDA. And LDA is a much stronger base, but sodium hydroxide or any type of hydroxide can get the trick done here. Okay, and what it will do is it will come, it will grab one of these hydrogens, and then these electrons will come over to the carbon, right? So what I get is one of the two forms for my enolate. And this particular form would look like this. So it would be CH2. And then the carbon, we'd really have a carbanion here. Okay. Or resonance wise, right, I could turn around and create the double bond here, and I could shift these pi electrons up to this oxygen. And so what I end up with there would be the alternate form. Now, this form is the more, when I say realistic, remember that resonance forms are really split between the two structures right so it's somewhere in between is where the truth lies but we do have major and minor contributors and because we're dealing with a negative charge here the oxygen 
carrying the negative charge. This is most definitely the major form or the more realistic form if we were to talk about uh, the closer of the two resonance forms. Okay, and this one would be the minor form because you've got the carbon, which is not as electronegative, trying to host that negative charge or that set of pi electrons. But again, remember, it's really a blend, right? Those extra pi electrons are moving very rapidly back and forth between uh, the different atoms involved here. But these are enolate ions, okay? And so we're really, what are we creating? We're creating nucleophiles, right? Because this carbon ion here, or this oxygen, or the pi electrons that are being sent back and forth between them, okay, this is nucleophilic, okay? Or if you want to have this form, this pi bond is nucleophilic. It could go out and it can interact or attach to some sort of an electrophile and that's exactly what we're getting ready to set up in some of these more complicated reactions when we talk about things like the aldol condensation or the Claisen condensation okay now one of the reasons that this works is due to the resonance so the only reason that these hydrogens are mildly acidic and we can do this is due to the fact that that carbonyl offers resonance because if this were just to be a regular alkane chain with no carbonyl group the pKa would be much higher it would be in the 50s most likely and so it is really the resonance that's allowing for this to happen and we call these positions that are directly next to a carbonyl the alpha position. And you're going to hear the term alpha and beta being used quite a lot in the enolate lecture. Okay, but if you have a hydrocarbon, this carbon right here is known as an alpha carbon. It is one space away. This one would also be an alpha carbon. Okay, One space away from the carbonyl functionality in the middle here. And if you have hydrogens in an alpha position on a alpha carbon they can be removed and they are considered to be mildly acidic now you have to be careful because in the case of something like an aldehyde okay it has to be on a alpha carbon so the aldehydic proton okay even though it's in an alpha position relative to the carbonyl this is not going to be acidic okay and that's because if I try to remove that, uh, I'm not going to have a carbon left behind to create a carbon ion, right? Then I'm looking at the carbonyl directly is where those electrons would go. And that's a different case. But the other end, right, if I'm making an aldehyde, this would be considered acidic. And I would be able to work with that using something like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Okay, so you just have to be careful regarding uh, what you're looking at. Same thing for esters, and we're actually going to, this is a good lead into the last part of the topic here in a minute. But when you take a look at esters, okay, the ester, this oxygen is really what we're going to be considering the alpha position here, and this CH3 is an alpha position. Okay, so if I were to talk about the acidity of the hydrogens next to the carbonyl these would get the acidic check mark so those would work however this group over here would not right this is technically considered a beta position and it doesn't have direct access to that carbonyl as far as the resonance and so generally speaking we're going to say that these are not going to be acidic okay everything's relative which is why i said generally speaking you get a strong enough base you usually can can force things to go in certain situations but overall these are not going to be acidic relative to uh, the alpha set that's over on the left hand side there okay so the resonance is what's going to allow for this acidity effect and it's also extremely important to realize that if you've got an alpha carbon between two carbonyls right so let's say that i've got a structure like this Right. And then I've got, right, like a CH2 in the middle here, and then another carbonyl, almost a little reminiscent of an anhydride, but I don't have an oxygen in the middle here. I actually have an uh, alpha carbon. This guy right here is going to be way more acidic than the other end carbons. Right? And the reason for that is because it will pick up an additional resonance contributor because it's got two carbonyls each of which, right, could take on the negative charge in that alternate form. And so you get to something like this, and the pKa is going to be significantly lower, meaning it'll be more acidic, 
relative to the uh, monocarbonyl groups like the ketones and the aldehydes and stuff like that. Okay. Now, speaking of aldehydes and ketones and esters, I have a statement here. It says aldehydes and ketones make good enolates followed by esters. So aldehydes are the best. Okay. Sterically speaking, they tend to be more reactive. And then there's also like certain hyperconjugation arguments that you can make in terms of their reactivity as electrophiles, but they are going to be more acidic they're usually around a pk of like 17 somewhere in there whereas the ketones are usually around 19 to 20 okay but the esters have a pka of roughly 25 or somewhere in that range depending on what other groups might be around and the reason for that is that if you take a look at an ester the ester is less acidic than the others because when I have this alpha group right here and I take a look on the opposite end is this oxygen now most students will see this and they'll initially think oh there's an oxygen there it must be a good electron withdrawing group just because it's electronegative and that's not the case so if you remember if you've gone through and you've looked at resonance forms on aromatic rings if we have an OCH3 group or a nitrogen with lone pairs these lone pairs will donate towards okay these are electron donating situations and when you have something that has lone pairs and they can be donated directly into the system or the carbonyl here that's actually going to hinder some of the acidity right because what's being left behind well, if I expose the ester to hydroxide and I create the enolate, so I get the, we'll show it in this form here, right? So I get this enolate right here. Well, what is the enolate in a sense? It's really extra electrons, right? That have been removed from that hydrogen carbon bond and have been deposited onto this carbon right here. So if this carbon has a surplus, or we could really say, because it's in resonance with this, this entire structure has a surplus, right? It has extra electron density right now. The last thing it needs is a neighbor that is going to attempt to donate or give electron density in towards that area, okay? And so the fact that this is an electron donating group is actually going to hinder some of that acidity or the formation of this because this is actually a slightly less stable situation or setup than if it were to just be a ketone because if we didn't have that oxygen there and it was just a ketone this ch3 does not have lone pairs the same way the oxygen does and while it might be able to do a little bit of donating through hyperconjugation like we mentioned a minute ago um, as far as its ability to really formally donate lone pairs of electrons that's off the table. So that's not going to be um, nearly as problematic as when we've got the oxygen, right? Or a nitrogen group that might be there. So another example, nitrogen's even better at being a donator. Okay, imagine that I had something like this and then I had the nitrogen. You gotta be careful not to have the hydrogens on these nitrogens really, because then those could become more acidic than even the enolates would be. Right? But if I had something like this, this would definitely be an electron donating group. Okay, So these guys, this would probably be like a pK of close to 30, whereas this one would be like 25, a ketone 19 to 20, an aldehyde about 17. So there's this sliding scale based on if you've got things that are donating. Now it's just the opposite if you have something that's withdrawing. Okay, So if you have, uh, you know, let's say you've got a CH3 group, then you've got a carbonyl, and then over here you've got a carbon and instead of hydrogens you've got fluorines here okay well the fluorines are extremely electronegative and in this case the fluorine and this is important because a lot of people they'll go oh well you just said the oxygen and the nitrogen have lone pairs they donate why wouldn't the fluorine well take a look i'm not saying that the fluorines directly attached to the carbonyl like the oxygen was like the nitrogen was i'm saying it's one group removed this carbon okay so what it's going to be doing here, because it's not in this pi system where it's going to attempt to conjugate or do anything like that, it's really just going to exhibit its electronegative effects. It's going to start pulling here, right, trying to remove electrons and bring them towards the fluorines. And as a result, if I end up doing this and I create an enolate, well then, if there's extra electron density, 
that's in this area, I've got something on the other side that's trying to pull on electron density, right? It's trying to kind of distribute it outwards or move it around. And that's a good thing. That's a beneficial thing for this enolate then. So this would be more acidic than its regular ketone counterpart uh, of acetone because of those electron withdrawing effects due to the electronegativity. Again, it would be different if we had something directly attached to the carbonyl versus it's on that alpha carbon, but then it's really occupying more of like a beta position or the next position to that. Okay, so that should take care of the general introduction to enolates. Okay, their resonance is what really drives the acidity. And then you can do some compare and contrast there with some of the chemistry involved. So um, head on over to Chem Complete. We've got guides of all sorts to help you guys get through chemistry. If you need help with spectroscopy, NMR, solving unknowns, if aromaticity is bothering you, uh, if you've got issues with substitution reactions, elimination reactions, we have lots of guides over there. They're only a couple bucks. It's a great way to support the channel. I don't want to keep you any longer than that. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you guys in the next lecture. Thanks for learning with me.